Good morning. Today's topic is reader response criticism. Uh, this is uh, uh, the approach or theory which we came to prominence in the 60s. This is connected to post structuralism's emphasis on the reader's role in actively constructing a text rather than passively consuming them. So, in other words, who is the key person here? The reader. As the name itself suggests, it the focus is on readers. Reader response criticism believes that a text has no meaning before a reader experiences it or reads it. Here, the critic examines the ways in which different readers are uh, uh, using another uh, academic jargon, interpretative communities. They make meaning out of both personal reactions and inherited ways of reading. The, the concept is that uh, uh, every reader brings along um, some uh, his own or her own attitudes, beliefs and practices and this is the way they interpret a text. It could be a film or a work of art or a literary text and uh, we all have our own preconceived notions and knowledge and attitudes and beliefs that shape our understanding and our interpretation of the text. So, again to repeat both personal reactions and inherited ways of reading these are the things that influence uh, the way we read a text. Uh, one of the foremost theorists of uh, the reception theory was Edmund Husserl a German philosopher and a critic and uh, uh, he uh, gave us the doctrine of phenomenology. You can look at the keyword here phenomenology and we owe this word to uh, the theories of Edmund Husserl. And the foundation of this were laid by uh, Husserl who lived from 1859 to 19. 38 and he was a German philosopher and critic. The word phenomenon means appearance. So, what Hassel meant was as a philosophical concept phenomenology shifts our emphasis of a study away from the external world of objects. Hassel points out the complexity of the term phenomenon where we perceive an object uh, and uh, when we perceive an object, it appears to us in different ways and there are several ways of looking at an object. The idea is that there are several ways of looking at an object and here we can apply it to the text that we look at. Another key theorist of uh, reception theory is Hans Robert Hotz. He too was a German critic and a philosopher. Here, one of his important texts was literary history as a challenge to literary theory, a lengthy name literary history as a challenge to literary theory. Here he argues that the history of a work's reception by readers played an integral role in the work's aesthetic status and significance. So, again the focus is shifted on the readers that reception by readers plays an integral role in the works aesthetic status significance and its reception. Reader response criticism encompasses various approaches to literature that explore and seek to explain the diversity and sometimes even divergence of readers responses to literary works. Now, um, Louis Rosenblatt, Louis Rosenblatt uh, is often crit, uh, credited with pioneering the approaches uh, in her book Literature as Exploration published in 1938. Uh, in her 1969 essay towards, uh, towards a Transactional Theory of Reading, she summed up her position as a poem is what the reader lives through under the guidance of the text and experiences as relevant to the text. She continues. The idea that a poem presupposes a reader actively involved with a text is particularly shocking to those 
seeking to emphasize the objectivity of their interpretations. Now, we have been talking about formalism, the formalists and uh, what did they talk about um, and uh, uh, the, con the, the focus was on form and the way a poem or a work uh, of literature was formed. So, they spoke of the poem itself. If you would recall that formalists emphasized on uh, discussing the text or the poem itself uh, as the concrete work of art. If they have no interest in, in what a work of literature makes a reader live through. In uh, the verbal icon, which is a 1954 book by William K. Wimsett and Monroe C. Beardsley, um, they use the term affective fallacy, which we have already discussed when we were talking about formalism and new criticism. And this is used to define an as erroneous the very idea that a reader's response is relevant to the meaning of a literary work. So, this is the background and now we come to one of the foremost uh, exponents of reader response criticism, Stanley Fish. So, remember we have been talking about Edmund Hussle and H. Robert Haas as well as Louis Rosenblatt, who have been talking about, uh, it is important to look at an object or a text um, in a variety of ways. Now, Stanley Fish, whose early work is seen by many people as ma making the or marking the true beginning of contemporary reader response criticism, also took issues with the tenets of formalism. In his work, Literature in the Reader, Affective Stylistics, uh, published in 1970, he suggests that literature exists and signifies when it is read. And Fish suggests and its force is an affective one. Okay, so, what he suggests is that um, literature ex exists and signifies when it, when it is read and its force is an affective one. Furthermore, reading is a temporal process, not a special one. As formalists assume, when they step back and survey the literary work as if it were an object spread out before them. Coming back to uh, Stanley Fish, uh, in his book and this is his uh, seminal text called, Is There a Text in This Class? So, Fish argues that what constrains interpretation is not fixed meanings in a linguistic system that gives determinacy to the meaning of an utterance, but rather the context of the utterance. Fish's overall explanation of text and textuality offers a balanced counter to the formalists who claim that the text is an object, object in its own right and that it somehow possesses stable meaning independently of any reader. So, what is uh, the key idea here that uh, where they differ, where the proponents of reader response criticism differ from the proponents of formalism is in formalism uh, we are encouraged to look at the text in itself. You remember the terms autonomy of the text. Um, the formulas do not give too much of emphasis or, or significance to the readers. Whereas, in reader response criticism, the mean there is uh, uh, the shift, the emphasis shifts on the reader okay? and uh, they go contrary to the formalist claim that the text is an object in its own right and that it possesses a stable meaning independently of any reader. Wolfgang Iser, German critic, he has described that process in The Implied Reader, his seminal work, The Implied Reader, Patterns of Communication in Prose Fiction from Bunyan to Beckett. And this was written in 1974. Another book is The Act of Reading, 
a theory of aesthetic response which was published in 1976. In his works, Iser argues that texts contain gaps or blanks that powerfully affect the reader who must explain them, connect what they separate and create in his or her mind aspects of a work that aren't in the text but are incited by the text. These are only hinted by the text, uh, however they are missing and this is something that uh, you will find um, in a very uh, popular and critically acclaimed text like the English Patient uh, by Michael Ondate, where uh, there are too many gaps or blanks. It is left to the reader's imagination to fill in those gaps and blanks. So, this is these are the kinds of texts where you can um, supply or where the reader can supply his own information which comes from, uh, from his own knowledge, previous knowledge and attitudes and understanding uh, uh, literature and also his world view. So, a reader has the capacity to provide meanings uh, to that uh, to, to those blanks which are which are aren't stated very explicitly in the text but are only hinted at with the redefinition of literature as something that only exists meaningfully in the mind of the reader and with the redefinition of the literary work as a catalyst of mental events comes a redefinition of the reader okay so now reader becomes supreme uh, you may also recall um, this famous essay by Rola Bart, uh, Death of the Author, okay, which we will talk about very soon. No longer is the reader the passive recipient of those ideas that an author has planted in a text. The reader is active and this is the major principle of reader response criticism. People like Rosenblatt and uh, Wolfgang Iser, they insist that the reader is active and not passive and he or she has the ability to um, interpret or under, analyze or understand the text according to his or her own world view. Fish also makes the point, same point or similar point in literature in the reader and where he famously states, reading is something you do. And it is a loaded phrase that reading is something you do because uh, uh, reading is not just um, something that is imposed on you, but it is something that you actively choose to do. It is a very participatory kind of an act. Now, Iser in focusing critical interest on the gaps in text, on the blanks that readers have to fill in similarly redefines the reader as an active maker of meaning. Other reader response critics define the reader differently. Now, there is a critic called Wayne Booth, W A Y N E B O O T H. Wayne Booth uses the phrase the implied reader to mean the reader created by the work. Eisen also uses the term the implied reader, but substitutes the educated reader for what Fish calls the intended reader. Whatever way the importance of reader had never been so prominent. So, the implied reader, the intended reader, um, the educated reader call it whatever, but the reader becomes supreme. Since the mid 1970s, reader response criticism has evolved into a variety of new forms. Now, we have subjectivists like David Blanche, Norman Holland and Robert Crossman and they have viewed the reader's response not as one guided by the text, but rather as one motivated by deep seated personal psychological needs. In other words, a reader is not just following the path that the writer chooses for him. Uh, he also creates his own path okay, and he is motivated by the deep seated and psychological needs which uh, stem from within. Now, uh, 
reader response criticism focuses on the reader and how he or she receives the literary work. So, this is the major feature that we should remember. Critical approaches to literature that stress the validity of reader response to a text theorizing that each interpretation is valid in the context from which a reader approaches a text. So, this kind of a need uh, uh, and reader response criticism it arose as a critical theory in response to formalist interpretations of literature. Unlike the latter which stressed the primacy of the text and an objective interpretation of it, we have been talking about how objective and this was the major criticism leveled against uh, new criticism and formalism uh, that they are too objective and they too uh, scientific way of uh, understanding a text. So, unlike formalism which stressed the primacy of the text and an objective interpretation of it based on established criteria, advocates of reader response criticism focused on the importance of the reader and their individual subjective response to the text. One of the earliest proponents of this theory as we have already talked about was Louis Rosenblatt who uh, the stated that um, uh, a poem is what, what the reader lives through under the guidance of the text and experiences as relevant to the text. The significance Rosenblatt and other reader response critics placed on the reader was in direct opposition to the position taken by formalist critics in the past. We have already seen how formalists um, viewed the text um, as a primary focus, as an object of primary focus and its impact on the reader or the idea that reader's response was in any way relevant in the uh, interpretation of the work was inconceivable for the formalists. So, they found it hard to believe that a reader can be um, participatory in giving meaning or making meaning for the text. Okay, so, look at the text itself, this is, this is what uh, the uh, principal feature of formalism was and we have to remember that how reader response theory or criticism goes uh, against it, how it is counterposed to it. Apart from Rosenblatt, other read, uh, influential uh, reader response critics we have already seen, they are Stanley Fish and Wolfgang Iser and both argued against regarding literary works as mere objects. All of them were unanimous in their um, rejection of the affective fallacy theory proposed by um, Wimstead and Beardsley. Now, uh, just to recall, uh, in their essay, Wimstead and Beardsley stated their misgivings about uh, what they term as uh, obstacles to objective criticism and the dangers of intentional fallacy, defined as confusion between the text and its origins and affective fallacy explained as the distinction that should be made between what a text is and what it does. During the late 1970s and 80s, reader response criticism influenced in part uh, by trends in other disciplines especially psychology and uh, psychoanalytical theories expanded to include a study of the reader as subject, a combination of various social practices defined and positioned socially by his or her environment. Recent works by critics including uh, uh, Norman Holland, they, these have also expanded the focus of reader response theory and this is a departure from the earlier held position which emphasize the primacy of the relationship between reader and text regardless of the environment in which a text functions. Now, Fish he has laid out in his theories regarding interpretive strategies um, which are shared by interpretive communities in several essays um, which he wrote during the 1980s and uh, subsequently. So, uh, the idea is in uh, reader response criticism that the act of reading is like a dialogue between the reader and the text that has meaning only when the two are joined in uh, conversation. 
So, there has to be an actively um, an active participation and active dialogue between the reader and the text. The entire idea redefines the role of the text from an independent object into something that can only exist when it is read and interacts with the mind of the reader. In this way, the reader is not a passive recipient of what the text says, but rather takes an active role in interpreting it. So, therefore, the concept of interpretative communities. Now, uh, this form of criticism even goes so far as to examine the role that individual words and phrases in the text play when interacting with the reader. The sounds and shapes that, word, that words make or even how they are pronounced or spoken by the reader can essentially alter the meaning of the text. And this is uh, a key feature of reader response criticism that um, readers interpret every single sound and word in their own unique ways. And all these things can add to the meaning, can, can alter the meaning of the text, which was not uh, uh, thought of earlier. So, what are the theoretical assumptions now? That literature exists only when it is read, meaning uh, is an event, okay? that literary text possesses no fixed and final meaning or value, there is no one correct meaning. Literary meaning and values are transactional and dialogic. There is always a dialogue happening, there is, al there is always a transaction or exchange happening between who? Between the readers and the text. And these transactions uh, uh, are uh, happening between the reader and the text. These dialogues are created by the interaction of the reader with the text. So, uh, going back to Wolfgang Iser, uh, he argues that the text in part controls the reader's responses, but contains gaps that the reader creatively fills. Uh, there is always a tension between the implied reader who is established by the response inviting structures of the text and this type of reader is assumed and created by the work itself and the actual reader who brings his own experiences and preconceived notions to the text. So, the, um, the implied reader and the actual reader, there is always a tension between the two entities. Reader response criticism starts with what formalist literary criticism call the affective fallacy that the response of the reader is relevant to understanding a text and uses it focus of approaching a work of literature. There are different approaches within this school of critical theory. However, some look at the work from the individual reader's point of view, while others focus on how groups or communities view the text. So, you see there is a difference between how um, an individual read, reader would read a text and how communities or groups would view a text. For these schools of criticism, it is what the text does to the reader that is important and not necessarily the work itself, the author's intent or the social, political or cultural context in which it was written. The implied reader was an idea introduced by Wolfgang Iser and this is the reader who is required for the text, the reader who the author imagines when writing and who he or she is writing for. So, this reader is guided by the text which contains gaps meant for the reader to fill explaining and making connections within the text. The reader ultimately creates meaning based not only what is in the text, but what the text has provoked inside him or her. And Stanley Fish introduces the term the informed reader who brings prior shared knowledge to the experience of reading. So, different kinds of read, readers, but the same idea that it is the reader who makes meaning of a text. There is also concept of social reader response and social reader response criticism focuses on interpretive communities, groups that have shared beliefs and values and how these groups use particular strategies that affect 
both the text and their reading behaviors. It is the group that then determines what an acceptable interpretation of the text is with the meaning being whatever the group says that it is. For example, a book club or a group of college students uh, based on their own cultural and group beliefs will generally agree on the ultimate meaning on a text. Right now what we are witnessing is a, a very popular work like uh, the Harry Potter series and there are uh, all kinds of blogs and social networking sites which interpret the work or the text um, in their own unique ways. So, individually we can find uh, our own personal meaning um, in the story of Harry Potter and there are also groups and communities of uh, devoted followers who provide their own meaning to the text. Roman in Garden is one of the most uh, influential critics of this theory. Uh, in Garden adapted a phenomenological approach to explain how we respond to a work of art. Um, he was a, a Polish theorist and uh, most of his works have been translated in uh, the English language. One of his seminal works is the literary work of art published in 1926 where he tells us the feature of a literary work and what parts it must have and how they are interrelated. He also describes how literary work relates to other entities such as authors, copies of texts, readers and ideal meanings. So, it is not just a work by itself, but how various parts are interrelated and various parts from different texts as well as various authors and also copies of text. So, every copy of a text also differs and how uh, there could be patterns uh, of interrelatedness in them and all these constitute a meaning for the reader. So, all this come, uh, come under reader response criticism according to Foreign Garden, a literary work originates in the intentional acts of consciousness of its author. These acts and this is an important term in Garden acts, these acts make it possible for a reader to re-experience the work in his or her own consciousness. Every reader experience these acts of uh, reading and which is a very intentional act and it is an act of consciousness. So, in a conscious act of reading and every reader has his uh, uh, or her own approach towards the text. Again, according to Ingarden, the text contains many elements that are places of indeterminacy. So, this is another important term that you should know, indeterminacy and an active reading response to the sequence of the printed words and fills out, this is very interesting, please pay attention to this fact that a reader who is active, he consciously or she consciously fills out these indeterminate aspects of the text. Suppose you read a text and there is a sense of uh, deliberate indeterminacy. You as a reader are supposed to fill out these gaps and these indeterminacy. So, a reader brings along his own uh, consciousness, how he or she responds. So, all these are terms associated with Roman in garden. So, the reader by filling in these gaps and indeterminacies, he concretizes the schematic literary work. So, there is a literary work is a schema and a reader through his or her acts of consciousness concretizes the literary work. Such a reading is also termed as co-creative with the conscious processes recorded by the author. 
for the reader it constitutes a quasi reality not complete reality but a quasi reality which is its own fictional world so reader creates his or her own quasi real fictional world by filling out those gaps and indeterminacies so that's the idea of roman in garden and his approach to uh, reading a text now limitation of reader response criticism so it is often argued that reader response criticism allows for any interpretation of a text to be considered valid and can devalue the content of the text as a result you know sometimes people may go haywire with their interpretation of a text they may go totally off the mark so that could be a very dangerous way of interpreting a text and that's a uh, serious limitation uh, people also argue scholars also argue that the text is being ignored completely uh, or that it is impossible to properly interpret a text without taking into consideration the culture or era in which it is written um, another major complaint against uh, reader response criticism is that these theories do not allow for the readers knowledge and experiences to be expanded by the text at all in spite of uh, its uh, few pitfalls or drawbacks reader response criticism re uh, remains very popular very fashionable among critics and students of literature and some of the questions and concerns it raises is that uh, how does the interaction of text and reader create meaning so this is something that we all look into that how do how are meanings created uh, when there is an interaction between text and reader do the sounds and shapes of the words as they appear on the page or how they are spoken by the reader enhance or change the meaning of the text also how might we interpret a literary text to show that the readers response is or is analogous to the topic of the story so these are the major questions that uh, as students of literature we should be concerned with while uh, looking at the reader response criticism so to sum up these are the key concepts the implied reader interpretative communities phenomenology and uh, the key idea is reader is supreme in reader response criticism as opposed to the autonomy of the text as suggested by the formalists these are the key names edmund hussel ha robert hoss wayne booth stanley fish wolfgang eiser and louis rosenblatt so here is a link to some important references some very useful links please make a note of these you may notice that there is also a youtube link which is um, a link to professor linda hachin talking about reader response criticism i do hope that you find time to look at these links thank you very much and see you in the next class mm -hmm.